Let's welcome in Tom Lee, Fundstrat's managing partner, head of research, also a CNBC contributor. It's good to see you on this Friday. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you, Scott. Great to see you. I led in here with the fact that, you know, we have this streak going for stocks. We above 5,800 for the S&P for the first time ever, though it seems to me from your notes that you're a little bit cautious as this month progresses. Why? Well, Scott, we're, we're cautious, but we advised our clients to be buying the dips. And the reason we're cautious is that, I, I'm, and I'm probably saying something very obvious, but I think investors want to see how who ends up becoming present after Election Day. So I think we are in a period where markets are just uh, sitting on the, the sidelines. But at the same time, 2024 has been such a strong year, Scott, that I think it, I think the last two weeks have proven that maybe macro is taking a little bit of a step back now and liquidity and all this cash on the sidelines is really the dominant factor. You, you think we just have to get the election out of the way and then it sort of clears the way for what you still think can be a pretty decent rally. I think your target's 6,000 or around that. Yeah, Scott, there's a lot of firepower uh, supporting stocks uh, post-election because we've got a Fed that's dovish and the economy looks healthy. I, I don't think we're in a recession. And so, I, I, you know, the three-month and six-month outlooks are very strong for stocks. And I think China, um, while there's maybe some hesitation, but China's government is really starting to unleash some measures, and that's supportive of that region finally turning. And, of course, the third factor is uh, I think after two years, investors who've been very cautious are starting to realize that, you know, the $6 trillion of cash on the sidelines and the low levels of margin debt need to be put to work at a time when the Fed is supporting the economy. Let's bring in uh, our next guest to talk about NVIDIA in the chip sector. Vivek Arya, Bank of America uh, Security Senior Semiconductors uh, Analyst. And uh, when you look at NVIDIA, it's good to see you, uh, Vivek. Uh, when you look at it, th th I think there's, there's two angles. One is how strong are its customers? How strong is demand going to be? And uh, then you've got, I guess, competitors to NVIDIA that want to get into the, the same business. And on both of those uh, metrics, I think you think NVIDIA is, is well positioned. They're still the leader and demand is still going to be strong. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Joe. I think the key is that uh, their uh, customers are in a race uh, to re-architect uh, the data center and replace traditional servers with accelerated servers. Uh, this movement had started about a year or two ago. And then as soon as we started to uh, see uh, the improvements in uh, generative AI and these large language models, which, by the way, you know, the computing requirements uh, to train some of these models are growing four to five times a year. So this is not your, you know, Moore's law progressing every two years. This is technology that is changing every, uh, you know, four to five times a year. So we need to throw a ton of computing infrastructure, and it is not just the processors, it is networking, it is optics, it is software, it is developers, it is bringing it all together. And in our mind, there is only one company that can bring it all uh, together. This is expensive, no doubt. Um, you know, we are going from uh, capital intensity uh, for a lot of these cloud players that used to be 9 or 10%, and now it's 15 or 16%, right? CapEx is growing 50 plus percent a year. But we do think uh, that uh, this is very important uh, for them. It can open up new revenue opportunities. And this uh, build out and re-architecting can last at least through the next decade with a four or five year of initial build out and then a lot more uh, success based uh, build out. And then finally, yes, there is competition, uh, but we do expect NVIDIA to maintain its 80 to 85 percent uh, market share and then another 10% uh, or so for uh, these uh, custom chips, and then a few percent for other players such as uh, AMD. You, gener you refer to it as a generational opportunity, and that, that, I guess that's 10 years, that'll continue. There's some industry events you point to, uh, Taiwan's res uh, semis results, AMD had an AI event, uh, all these things. What, what, so you're saying that all uh, of, of, of Avago, uh, Micron, all these things indicate is that that's demand for NVIDIA's Blackwell chips. Yeah, I think um, we have a few things that are uh, coming together. Uh, first of all, uh, the customers themselves are being pushed by uh, this private company, OpenAI, on one side, uh, that is innovating rapidly in a very kind of closed and proprietary uh, architecture. And on the other hand, uh, you have a company such as Meta 
that is putting out large language models in a very open format, right? Anyone can go and access uh, their models. So the traditional uh, cloud players are having to take the lead uh, from these two very important uh, forces. And uh, this is not just a US phenomena, right? We are seeing this spread across uh, the world where every country, every region wants to be involved in setting up uh, their large language model. Um, you know, NVIDIA is in India this uh, week, for example, and uh, there's a lot of large language models that are being trained in Indian languages, right, for that uh, culture. Um, you know, there are large language models that are being trained uh, for all the languages and culture of the Middle East. So I think this is a global uh, phenomena. Uh, enterprises are jumping on board. Um, you know, Novo Nordisk, Nordisk is uh, deploying a supercomputer, um, you know, using NVIDIA's help. So it's a global uh, phenomena. But as I mentioned, that in order to be successful in this, uh, you can't just be successful in semiconductors, right? You have to be successful in uh, the underlying systems, integration technology, in networking, and optics, and software, and uh, developers. And the other important part of what you mentioned is you need scale. Uh, you need to be able to work very well uh, with the supply chain um, because this is not uh, going to take just one player. It, it's going to take many different players uh, coming together and putting out this uh, technology with a lot of uh, reliability. That's the only way, I think, to scale it across this uh, broad base of uh, cloud and enterprise and uh, mm. sovereign entities. But Blackwell's fixed. That didn't take long, right? And, and you expect the yield to get better. What does that mean, the yield will get better for Blackwell? Yeah, initially when they put uh, the Blackwell product out, uh, there was an issue in just the underlying semiconductor wafer, so they have uh, fixed that. And we are now expecting uh, Blackwell to go from almost nothing to, you know, at least three to four billion dollars in their next uh, quarter, you know, going on to 10 to 15 and then to 20 plus billion dollars over the next uh, several quarters. Um, okay. You know, it, it is an extremely complex product. It's not just their product. Uh, we need to see a lot of other improvements in the data centers, such as uh, liquid cooling. Uh, so you have, you know, sort of the whole village coming together in making this successful because without making this successful, you're not going to have the scaling of a lot of these uh, large language models. You're not going to be able to really justify their speed or, or accuracy. And it's a virtuous yeah. cycle. Every time NVIDIA comes up with a better product, you have uh, the software community, the internet community, the cloud community, the enterprises uh, coming out with uh, applications that can take better advantage of it. And it goes uh, back and forth. And we think the cycle can last for uh, several years. And the one other point I would also want to make in terms of the stock itself, Yes, it has had a remarkable uh, run, but when we look at its earnings growth for next year that we forecast to be in the range of 40 to 50 percent, it is still trading less than one times that earnings growth. Okay. And if you look at the broader market, it's trading at two times the earnings growth. If you look at the other Max 7, they are also trading one and a half to two times their earnings okay. growth. So from that right. metric, we do think the stock is still compelling at these uh, levels. But we do have big news regarding one of the Max 7 stocks, and it is that Bryn has bought more NVIDIA, which I thought was pretty interesting considering the stock has been up a lot. It's right on the heels here of Apple with market cap. Why'd you buy more here? Yeah, so next week we know, which we're gonna get into, we have the Oscars of earnings with all of the big names that we talk about. And I think that, how do you play that trade? I own NVIDIA, I've owned it for a long time. And I think the stock technically Looks like it's breaking out. It had been consolidating for the past couple months. But I feel really confident Microsoft, Apple, via, chat, via OpenAI, Meta, Google, Amazon are all going to be talking about what? Their AI initiatives. And so I think next week we'll have some winners and losers, some disappointments. But I think all roads, once again, lead to NVIDIA. And you're going to continue to see huge CapEx spends from these companies as they're all individually looking to monetize their own endeavors into AI. And I still think NVIDIA is in pole position to benefit from all of that CapEx spend. So I took the opportunity to add to it yesterday.